All right, everyone, are you ready for it? We've got another case study. This week has been pretty impressive. We've had uh, solid case studies every single day. We had uh, a 200% gap and go on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Well, it happened again today. Well, it was 150%. Right now, the stock is up 172%. It actually did peak just over 200%. But in any case, uh, we're going to jump into the slides here, and I'm going to break down the price action on this one for you. So uh, the ticker symbol is RENT, R-E-N-T. And this one actually um, was gapping up after hours yesterday. So I checked on my phone uh, I, it must have been 7.30 or 8 o'clock. Um, just kind of looking to see, you know, what we kind of had for momentum as the day had gone on uh, yesterday. And I saw that rent made a move after hours. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. Um, I pulled up um, the news window and saw that they had reported quarterly earnings. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. That's the, that's the, that's the catalyst. Uh, and at that point, I was looking at the daily chart. Now, what I saw in the daily chart was that uh, the stock was a little more expensive. Uh, the float, though, by the way, uh, still quite low, 2 million share float. 200 moving average, simple, is at about 1650, exponential at about mm, 1889 or so, uh, 1967, sorry. So, you know, I was like, all right, we've got a couple moving averages up there, but those are a ways away. Somewhat recent reverse split. Um, that's good to see. And it, overall, it's a chart that's been beaten up for quite a long time and is now starting to curl off the low. Okay, so when I pulled up the five-minute chart, I saw the move after hours. It squeezed up, pulled back, hit a high of uh, 1395 after hours, and it closed strong at 12. Pre-market, it was dipping down. And so when I sat down at about 7 a.m., it was actively selling off. Now, it did actually come down to the 200 moving average here, um, but it was below VWAP. No trade on that for me. There were other stocks that were in focus at that time that I was um, dialed in on. So this ended up bouncing up, back down, got over VWAP for a second, back down, back up, back down. Honestly, coming into the open, didn't really expect anything from it. I, I could have easily seen it just kind of continuing to go sideways and just fade a bit more, but it halted up. It squeezed into a halt going up. Boom. That was in the first five minutes of the open. Then it opens, dips down, rips up to 13, pulls back, goes to another halt up here just under $15, $14.77. Then it opens, squeezes up to 17, some big candles here, drops down, and then pushes up to 18. This ended up hitting a high of just under $25 a share. Now, on the 10-second chart, what you'll see is actually in the first 30 seconds, it halts up. So it halted up basically immediately at the open. Um, and then it pops up just a little bit, drops down, and curls right in here. Starts to push higher, hits a high of 12, pulls back, and pushes up here. So on this one, to be honest, I was a little hesitant. So I can give you kind of a um, breakdown of, of what my day looked like. Hang on one Okay, so my the way my day started today, um, sat down around seven seven thirty, and pull, you know pulled up my scans as I always do. Had checked on my phone, saw that rent uh, was gapping up, but was selling off. Uh, we had RYLB. It's got fifty six million shares of volume. That was a leader. Um, ELYM was a leader, and LC and p or something like that i can't remember now that uh, was another one that was on the scans a bit earlier so you know we had a couple that were on the scans but i didn't love any of them i just sort of felt like i don't know they felt a little choppy they just didn't look quite right and i had seen a couple other traders who had red days yesterday and the day before and i managed to be green which i was really grateful for and i was like you know what let's go slow let's just you know i mean it's always Break, break the ice with the first couple of trades, but let's really be cautious. So I ended up not taking any trades, 7.30, 8, 8.30. And I'm like, gosh, I don't know. Is this going to be a no trade day? I'm not even, I'm not sure what's going to happen. And then CADL has news at 9 a.m. And it spikes here from 5.50 all the way up to 6.50. It pulls back, goes up to 7, pulls back, hits a high right here of 
715 before it drops way back down. So anyways, I got dialed in and started trading this one. And uh, but but having said that, 9 a.m. was when I took my very first trade. And on my very first trade, I only made 200 bucks. So I broke the ice, but you know, didn't really get um, didn't really get a lot of profit. And I was like, all right. Mm, feeling a little slow. And I was starting to resign myself that this might be a no trade day. You know, I was starting to kind of look at the price action. I was thinking, I don't know, this is choppy. I, maybe the best thing I can do is not take any trades. Because I also saw a couple people this morning who said they were at max loss on the day. So I was like, all right, I'm seeing people getting knocked down here. <laughs> I'm going to be careful before I jump in anything. All right. So, uh, so anyways, uh, so that's kind of how I was feeling. And, um, so first trade on CADL, I ended up making a couple hundred dollars. Second trade, now I'm up 500 on the day. Uh, third trade, I gave back 200, back to up 250. Uh, fourth, fifth trade, I got myself to up 800. And then sixth trade, uh, dropped down to up only uh, $25. So it went kind of back to flat. And then uh, actually went red on CADL, down $191. Uh, and then rent, you know, at the open comes up. So uh, I ended up feeling like I really had to be very careful on my first trades on rent. And so on my first trade on rent, I bought uh, 250 shares. That's a very small position. Uh, I, I would consider it to, for me to be a very small position. Uh, so I bought 250 shares on my first trade. I was in at, um, let's see. I bought actually I'm sorry it was 500 shares that was my first trade and I bought it $11.60 and that was um it was actually right here on this micro pullback so it it sort of did this um no I'm sorry it was right it was right in here um that I got that trade on rent right as it was starting to pull away I got in at 1160 it squeezed up to 1180 88 1190 and 12 took my profit and was up like 200 bucks. Um, not bad, but whatever. It dips down. Uh, I got back in as it comes up right here at 11.82 uh, and took profit as it squeezed through 12. I then uh, was able to add up around 12.60 and it squeezed up to 13. So now I'm kind of actively trading in this range. And you know, next thing I know, I'm up $400. I'm up 500, I'm up 600. Um, right in here, we got a pretty nasty rejection right there, this dump. But it came back up right here. And as it pulled away, I got a trade in this area. I kept just trading with small size, 500 shares, 250 shares, adding. Uh, we halted up at 1478. And it opened more or less flat. And then it just ripped. I ended up adding as it squeezed higher. We got a push up to 16, up to 17. Then it dipped, pulled back. Uh, ended up having a little consolidation here. And then we actually ended up getting a squeeze um, just in the last few minutes, all the way up to a high of 24. Pulled away at 18 here, and it went higher. Now, as it started to pull away at 18, I was actually, I'm kind of, I'm a little annoyed about this because I was looking at it right here. And at this time, the nine moving average, it was it was not it it pulls up when the price moves higher, but the price was going sideways and the moving average was going pointed this way. It was going more flat. And MACD was negative, but it was starting to curl. And so as I watched it right here, I was tempted to take this trade, but I was like, I don't know. And I was watching it pop up here and I was like, I don't know. I'm afraid we this could be a spot where we get a jackknife. But what ended up happening is it ended up pulling through, going up to 18, pulling back, going up to 8, 19, pulling back, and then it halts up again, opens, there was a dip and a rip up to 24, and that marked uh, was so far the high a day. So in total, uh, trading this, I made about $1,700, which, uh, you know, no doubt is is good, it's green, but I honestly feel, so my PL is 1,500 on the day. I feel kind of like, you know, a little bummed out. I didn't do better on it. I feel like I coulda, shoulda, woulda done better on it. But I didn't have a cushion on the day. You know, I never built my cushion today in the sort of pre-market uh, period. And 
then by the time I had a little bit of a cushion, I just was like, it's getting a little too late in the day for me to size up. And sizing up on rent would be risky because we are dealing with slightly larger spreads. Now, I'll say the spreads are a little tighter right now than they've been, uh, but we're also coming back into a period of consolidation, which is when we're likely to have tighter spreads. When it was pulling away, we had some big spreads and we had a couple of candles, as you can see here, like this one. Look at this. So right here, it, it breaks, goes to 2250. And then 20 seconds later, it's down at 20 bucks. Almost looked like it was going to halt down. And then it rips from 20 up to 24. Does a little micro pullback and then drops again to 22. So like it would have been really easy to screw up on this one. And I, I fortunately, you know, was able to avoid that, but it, it could have happened easily you know, pre-market or not pre-market, but earlier when we had this drop here, you know, it was just like a flush, but it rallied back up. Uh, but the thing is, every time I saw something like that, I was just like, you know what, this thing carries a lot of risk. I can't take, you know, 3,000, 4,000, 6,000 shares. It's just, it would be too risky for me. Um, yes, the profit would be wonderful, but the loss would not be tolerable. And that's kind of the thing is, when you get really focused on managing your risk, you definitely cap your upside, right? If you're focusing on risk so much, you're going to be more cautious, you're going to be more selective, and you're going to miss some opportunities. So let me get the whiteboard out here for a second. Um, and this is true not just with day trading, but it's also true with long-term investing. Um, you know, if if you don't want to take any risk, you know, you leave your money in a savings account earning tiny, tiny bit of interest. This is going to be over like, you know, a hundred years <laughs> earning a fraction of a percent. You're willing to take a little bit more risk. You know, you start putting some of that into ETFs. You're going to do better, right? You want to take more risk. You start putting some in a cryptocurrency or you put some into day trading. And, you know, but with any of this, you could at any time start to have these, these drops. Down here on a savings account with interest at the bank, you're not going to have drops, but you're not going to participate in the upside either. So, you know, it's really to each their own. And for me, I think because last month I had, I can't remember if it was four or five kind of big red days. We can pull up my uh, trader view and just take a peek at it. Because I had a couple of big red days last month, I, this month was like, I don't want to do that again. Why? It didn't feel good. I was frustrated. I didn't enjoy being up, uh, you know, whatever it was, $30,000 on the month of March and then giving it all back, right? So this was March, you know, beginning of March. So a really nice squeeze there in March. And then I gave it all back. Now I was able to rally back up a bit, but not that well. And then I had a couple more red days and I was getting myself really frustrated. So let's see, I last imported on the 5th. So I can grab my trades right now. We could do an import and see where I'm at. But the the thing for me was that I didn't feel good on these two days. And I didn't feel great on these two days either. And so I sort of started talking to myself about what strategies can I implement to, you know, reduce the likelihood of having these kinds of days because they don't feel good. They're stressing me out. And I would just rather, you know, I would rather be have a PL like this than have one that goes like this. You know what I mean? Like if if I'm gonna end in basically the same place either way. Now th there's no guarantee that's gonna be the case. I might make more money total on the the roller coaster ride. I've but I've also seen traders who will do these roller coasters and you know end up in this sort of break even period where you know I'm kind of the turtle going slow but I'm just, you know, slow and steady. So maybe by the end of the year, I'll actually be much further ahead. You know, that's definitely happened before. Um, it's, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen, um, you know, this year. But anyways, um, uh, it, because it's happened before, I'm kind of more inclined right now to keep my head down, focus on just locking up those base hits and not overstaying my welcome. So let me import these trades real quick. Um, so the way you do this is it's different for every broker that you use. Um, I'm just going to grab the file right there. So you import your file and then I just tag it with, with my IRA account. So this was the file name. 
and then I just click upload. All right, so now that's gonna upload and then I can go over here and I'll have to refresh, let's see, a couple times. Right, there we go. So yeah, so anyways, so Monday was a slow day, Thursday, Friday were slow, but then Tuesday was solid and Wednesday was solid, right? Those were a couple of solid green days, Tuesday, Wednesday. So anyways, you know, accounts starting to pull away. Today, eh, not so much, it's a smaller green day. But if we just focus on, well, you know, we go back to 327 or so, and really the month of April, well, no, actually it started before then. I, I got dialed in on this probably around this time here. Um, so kind of had a couple drawdowns, but you know, been been pretty, pretty steady here. And this is what I'd like to kind of continue. Uh, yeah, am I gonna have some drawdowns? Sure, and that's fine. I, I can tolerate that. This one was a little bit bigger than I think it needed to be. Um, 1100 though is fine. You know, 2500 is fine. So that's what I'm gonna try to focus on, keep my head down, being the turtle, being consistent, not overstaying my welcome. And, um, and hopefully, you know, we get onto another little hot streak here. It's been a little sideways. And part of that was because I dug myself such a big hole. Now, someone who didn't dig themselves a hole would have probably just continued going sideways small like this. And no doubt I would be further along if I hadn't, um, you know, incurred this loss. But anyways, it is what it is. So right now, just trying to stay focused, keep my head down. And it does mean I'm not participating quite as much in some of the upside, like on something like rent. Uh, you know, if I had more of a cushion, if I was feeling more confident, might have been taking bigger size up here, maybe. But it wasn't the case today, and so I had to manage risk. All right, so that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, recap. Reminder, as always, uh, the trading is risky. My results aren't typical, so manage your risk, take it slow, and I'll see you back here first thing tomorrow morning.